Hello, my name is Elisa Yanacone and I'm a photographer and cinematographer. My background came from documentary film and journalism and I think my heart's just always in human rights. I try to make stories that are pertaining to that with the realm of the imagination because I also love creativity. So yeah, it's, it's quite a broad spectrum. I did start in broadcast and television, then I did documentary film traveling abroad, ended up going into conflict zones, uh, getting very frustrated with the news cycles, and then little by little started streaming into uh, this magical realist space, which is multimedia, sometimes film, sometimes photography, there's holographic projections, but in the end, always with a heart in human rights. I've worked with prisoners of war in Cameroon. I've worked with displaced people and refugees, uh, sexual violence survivors, and children that have chronic illness in hospitals or have experienced severe trauma. So the Spiral of Containment is a traveling multimedia exhibition where I worked with 25 rape survivors around the world, myself included, and it came from personal experience with the topic. I felt like when this happened, I couldn't pick up a camera. So I didn't pick up a camera for a year and ended up thankfully being put by the government of Canada into art therapy, which I didn't even know existed. And when I was doing art therapy, I realized that I had lots of images that kind of stayed in the back of my mind. They weren't photojournalistic in nature or kind of recounting the event. It was more how I was made to feel. And in my mind, I had this image of broken wings in a dark space. I'm completely bare. I have nothing left. These wings had once had feathers, but they no longer do because I'm stuck and I'm never going to fly again kind of perspective. So I thought, OK, I'm going to connect with other survivors. We're going to come to my kitchen. We're going to collage. We're going to do some uh, kind of discussions about broken wings and see what everyone else you know, feels like. And it turned out that nobody else had the image of broken wings. Some of them had a red classic convertible car. Some of them had a, uh, a plane or perhaps ballet or being stuck in a cage. And as a cinematographer, I started to realize, actually, there's such a broad palette of imagery here that I would love to execute on. And so I decided to start to execute on people's visions. And I basically became a visual translator, after having had documentary-like or journalistic interviews with them, um, they would say certain phrases like, everything around me feels like a circus, or um, I felt like I was you know, never going to be able to see the light of day again. And then sketching with them and collaborating to create an image that they felt captured how they felt. I think as more distance has been placed between me and the project, the more I realized that I was actually kind of stuck in a wheel where I desperately just wanted to put this behind me. And I think it was almost a necessity to just say, I've set myself this impossible target to complete this thing because it feels impossible to get over this. And once I reach that, I'll be done. And I think when I wrote my book on it, I was naive to say something like, and this is how I close the chapter on this or something like that, because I genuinely felt in that moment, pen goes down, you are done. Only to realize that, you know, that's why I named it the spiral of containment, because it's cyclical in nature, healing these kinds of things, right? So I don't think it's something you're fully over, but I think that every time I spoke to someone, I learned about someone's story, I felt like I was giving them power back in a way. I felt that by doing that, I was also healing with them. I think it was just something that had to be done to have these kind of collective statements against sexual violence made, to be witnessed, to be heard, but also I felt like I needed to help other people as well. And because I had this you know, visual skill set, it just made me feel like, okay, this is something we can do together. What I would love to see in these kinds of projects is support. Because I applied to arts councils, granted pre me too, but I still have it in writing that they said, we don't see the need for a project of this nature at this time. And I couldn't believe that it wasn't because they didn't like my work or they thought I wasn't qualified, whatever, but it's like, no, there's no need. They wanted it to happen, but they didn't want to be as connected to it now. Once Me Too happened, this landscape is evolving and changing, but now we have new topics that are, you know, like walking on eggshells. And I think that we need to just have support 
for what's right and what's wrong, you know, like, and, and being able to tell stories like this openly. So that's number one. Secondly, with projects like these, I think it would be great to talk about how art can be a form of healing and also art can be a form of justice because when you're dealing with trauma, so many times it's about power being taken away from someone and it's never going to be uh, a situation where they find justice through traditional legal systems, right? Which is what we think of as justice. But art can actually present a format, if you will, where somebody's story can be heard and witnessed, presented in a way that they feel empowered again. And, you know, when people come and see that and share their story, it generates empathy. It, you know, if you do it through magical realism, you don't cause compassion fatigue like you do in the news every day. And so I think that just understanding that art has much more power than being pretty pictures, I think is really important and, and can really shift our society towards directions that we don't yet understand. The Spiral of Containment was a very unique kind of project where I had been in therapy for this reason and I also had a therapist on call. So for a lot of my career actually, I might have not had a therapist on call the whole way, but if I needed therapy tomorrow, I'd know who to call. And I think that that part is hugely important. Even when I was covering conflict zones, you know, sometimes you gotta put up a front because you can't in that moment react. You have to just get through your day, but then taking that moment at the end of the day to just cry your eyes out if you have to, or journal, or you know, whatever you need to decompress. So I think that's really important. And it's also really important that it doesn't stop at you, but if you're dealing with these kinds of sensitive topics, I mean, I had a therapist that I spoke to to try and determine are people ready to tell the story in this way? Is it gonna benefit them to tell the story in this way? How could it go wrong? Safeguarding yourself is sometimes the last thing you think about because you're so immersed in the story, the project, the tech, the whatever you need to do. Um, and I've seen it a lot also in challenging environments and more journalistic capacities. I mean, a lot of people drink quite heavily. People do drugs, people can go for days without sleep, you know, chain smoke like crazy and just find, find kind of ways to fill that emotional void because it's too much, right? And so I think that it's very easy to forget, but it's like the most important thing to remember because if we don't do that, then we won't be able to ca carry on with the work. I think anyone that's thinking about getting into this type of work, the number one thing is asking why. Because if I go back to trying to understand why I gravitated towards conflict initially was because I came from a family that felt like conflict every day. And so I was seeking out comfort, what felt like my everyday life. And I was really good at it because I was used to operating with so much adrenaline. But then I realized that wasn't a healthy relationship with it, right? And so I did a lot of work on myself, therapy, EMDR, um, to get myself to a place where I'll still go to these places, but it's not this, I have to, you know? Um, it's more curated in my way. So I, I just think everybody's got to dig back and try and understand why am I doing this? And how can I give myself the best tools to get there? Because if I'm running away from a pain or I'm putting myself in a dangerous situation because I've experienced trauma, then you're not giving yourself the best tools to tell the story and, and to help others. So number one would be take care of yourself. Number two, get hostile environment training. Get basic like understanding of, you know, kind of emergencies. Um, you know, if you're dealing with a lot of mental health, maybe you've been in therapy a lot, maybe you've chatted a lot to therapists, or maybe you need a course on how to deal with different kinds or understand different types of mental health issues. So it's all about sensitivity, empathy, sensitizing with what you're about to embark on, um, and trying your best to be as, not just empathetic, but true to the other person's story. So see yourself as a vessel to help someone share their story as opposed to this is what I'm doing and this is what it's going to be. There is something to be said about the bombardment of images that we get every single day and how this leads to compassion fatigue and the so-called apathy. I feel like people really do care and if people had a bit of a step or guideline as to what they could do to change things, most people would try to do something like this. 
Um, by exploring images and serious topics in this way, I feel like you awaken curiosity in people in a way that you thought was just dead, and suddenly they start to care and ask questions. So I think it's really important to stray away from the lines and the boxes that have been established to try and explore how we can actually come together through art in a way that is kind of lost. When people come to see my work, what I'm really hoping is a few things. One, to generate empathy, to open up topics in discussion environments, safe environments uh, that generally are considered taboo or put, shoved under the table. I want people to feel like pain is okay, having experienced pain is okay because we all have and kind of demystifying the fact that sometimes people feel like they're an island. It's like this only happened to me, nobody can understand and it's actually breaking down the fact that a lot of people understand. Also, it's about generating communities, right? Generating empathy, understanding that even if I haven't experienced what's in the photo, I can see myself mirrored in the work because you know what? I've had a dark day too, or I've been depressed once too, or I've experienced a, a car crash and I was traumatized and I had PTSD and I can see that too. So I think it's about building bridges and finding intercultural connectors that are not tied to geography, religion, politics, or anything like that. It's about just understanding we're human, we're on the same ship, we're all heading in the exact same direction, and the easier we make it for each other, the better.